Hi, welcome to Social Research Insights. The purpose of Social Research Insights is to uh, promote open source software for data anal analysis for both academics and corporate research needs. This is in fact one of the parts of my series of presentations on uh, geoinformatics through R language. Uh, uh, in my previous video I have explained how to retrieve or, or or get the data file related to genomic information of any given species from few of the world renowned repositories and I explained how NCBI and uh, EMBL and DDJ uh, uh, I mean DNA database DDBJ of Japan are very much helpful in retrieving the data files or data sets of gene sequences for uh, genomic analysis. In this video I'm going to explain the importance of GC content in understanding the the, 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 the gene sequence or genomic information of uh, of a microbe or maybe a species and uh, it is needless to say that the GC content is very much important in understanding the understanding the DNA or any nucleotide or uh, uh, g genome of uh, a particular uh, species. There are so many. Uh, I mean, there is a lot of research effort by by a legion of scientists uh, who belongs to this area of study. I mean, geno genome, gen 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 genomics. Uh, in this uh, presentation, I'm uh, I'm going to show you a few of the papers. I mean, the research papers written by a few scientists through their research efforts adducing the importance of GC content in understanding the genomic information okay and first let me explain what exactly is GC content so you know that there are four uh, uh, nucleotide nucleotides in DNA molecule they are uh, uh, called uh, Guanine, cytosine, adenine, and thymine. So now the, the and these uh, nucleotides are the nitrogenous bases, or uh, has some peculiar bonds. I mean, G C has a bond, and A T has a bond. So this is actually. So you can just go through a few few, few videos, uh, the research, uh, I mean the literature on this, uh, what exactly is gene and DNA and uh, and the rest of the aspects of a genome. You you can simply come to know what are the G, C, A, T, and these are the four important uh, uh, the bases of uh, DNA. And now the G C content is a, a bond that which we observe um, as one of the important uh, uh, pair uh, bonded together. I mean, the in which uh, G, comma C are bonded together with uh, three hydrogen bonds. That is the most important uh, aspect of this uh, pair, known as G C. Uh, I, I, it's I, it's very clear here. I brought a statement here. It's very clear through the statement that the DNA with high GC content is more stable than DNA with low GC content. However, the hydrogen bonds do not stabilize the DNA significantly, and stabilization is due to mainly to stacking interactions. But that is a different thing. But but we have a supporting statement, uh, or in support of uh, our assumption that the GC content helps us to study the genomic information of any uh, species. And I'm not talking this. And this is mentioned in one of the papers titled "Base Tagging and Base Pairing Contributions into the Thermal Stability of DNA Double Helix." written by Ekoshek and uh, uh, Protozanova uh, and Etel. Uh, they in fact mention this uh, statement that the, the GC content helps us to understand the stability of DNA. So if, if the DNA is stable, which simply means that the species is highly evolved in evolution pro process. So with this notion, we got to take this point as a valid observation 
for genomic analysis okay and next uh, the there is another paper titled analysis of intragenomic gc content homogeneity within prokaryote prokaryotes which is uh, published in bmc genomics and uh, this is the link uh, to that paper you can see that uh, url highlighting when i put the cursor on this uh, footnote and this is written by john bolin and with a few other researchers and they did a wonderful research uh, on some certain species uh, they used a peculiar method called gc var and this method helps them to understand the variability or variance of gc content or gc segments in a in in, in dna and the observation goes like this a low gc var indicates intragenomic gc homogeneity and high gc var indicates heterogeneity what simply means that uh, if the if the variance is high uh, the the genomic uh, mm, the, the there is a lesser genomic homogeneity and if the variance is high gc variance is high then the genomic uh, heterogeneity has been observed and there is a they, they did some regression analysis mm, and they state that the regression analysis indicated that the gc var was significantly associated with the domain uh, that is uh, rk and bacteria or bacteria phylum and oxygen requirement gc var was significantly higher among anaerobes which means the species that doesn't require oxygen and uh, the then both uh, aerobic and uh, facultative micros which means highly organized or uh, uh, evolved uh, uh, species so so I, I mean finally i can uh, it, it is very clear that the gc content can help us to to study the genome of a species uh, not only that and it also helps us to understand the 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 advancement of a species in evolution process and there is another paper which is written by peter ekoshak with a uh, few other researchers and the title of the paper is base tracking and base pairing contributions into the thermal stability of dna double helix there are so many papers that talks about the bendability uh, and uh, the, the the thermal stability and uh, a few other transitions and this is one of the papers which belongs to that uh, category and here the paper goes like this uh, and the paper mentions that uh, and the researchers uh, try to mention that for all temperatures and salt concentrations employed in present study I mean in this study base tagging is the main stabilizing factor uh, in the DNA double helix so which which will simply mean that the base tagging means the pairs so the GC or AT pairs uh, observed as the stabilizing factor rather than the extra external uh, uh, the conditions. AT pairing is always destabilizing and the GC pairing contributes almost no stabilization. Base tagging interactions dominates not only in the double uh, duplex uh, overall stability but also significantly contributes into the dependence of the duplex stability in its sequence. Though they say that they did not find any evidence uh, that uh, either AT or GT has some influence on the stabilization but they do accept that, that the, 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 the base page helps us to understand the, the, the maturity of DNA so that is in fact uh, most important observation from this research uh, through this mm, the paper written by Peter Rital uh, title base tracking and base pairing contributions into the uh, into thermal stability of the DNA double helix which is published in Oxford General uh, General, S General Science mm, General of Science and Mathematics perhaps and there is another paper written by Zhou Ning uh, Zhang uh, Go the title of the paper is analysis of the relationship between the genomic GC content and patterns of base usa usage codon usage and amino acid usage in prokaryotes and it is uh, preparation in plus one 
and this is the URL of the paper which you can see that HTTP so when I put the cursor you can see that URL highlighted HTTP uh, colon four slash four slash www.ncbi and a dot nlm dot nih dot gov okay anything you can you can you can go through that uh, paper online and here the paper mentions that we analyzed I mean the researchers analyzed the distance of base frequencies at the three code on positions code on frequencies and amino acid compositions across genomes with respect to the differences in the GC content of these prokaryotic species they found that although the prokaryote uh, phylogenetic lineages were remote among uh, some species a similar genomic GC content forced them to adopt similar base usage patterns at the three codon positions codon uses patterns and amino acid uses patterns so here this is important this statement is very important though the the phylogenetic lineages were very distant but the GC content uh, forces them to adopt the similar usage patterns. So, which simply means that the GC content play very vital role in understanding the nature of the species. So, that is in fact the important observation from this research uh, done by these people, uh, which was published in PLOS One. And there is another paper written by Alexander E. Uh, Wynogredo. Uh, the title of the paper is DNA Helix, the importance of being GC rich, uh, published in Nucleic Acid Research, uh, which is again from NCBI. Uh, and the paper mentions that in genes and intergenic uh, inter spacers of form blooded animals, both the relative bendability, this is what I mentioned earlier uh, when I was uh, talking about uh, some other paper. Uh, there are there's, there's a lot of uh, research on these uh, aspects of uh, uh, genome, uh, like bendability, uh, ability to be jet transition, and thermostability. So, this paper rather concentrated on these aspects of genome. Uh, the scientists are trying to study the maturity of the gene based on bendability, ability to be transition and thermal stability. The uses of the synonymous codons in GC rich genes were also found to augment bendability, ability to be transition and thermal stability. That is the the important point from this research that uh, they, 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 they conclude that the genes uh, augments, I mean develops automatically based on the bendability and the development of the gene can be can be studied with the help of the bendability, ability to be transition, and thermal stabi stability. And uh, mm, and this is highly related to GC rich genes. And this is very much true uh, to the genes that were rich in GC content. So that's the most important observation from this paper. And the another paper that which which is written by A.T. Sumner and others, the uh, the title of the paper is the distribution of genes on chromosomes, a cytological approach, which was published in Journal of Molecular Evolution in 1993. And the paper goes like this: Studies during the last 20 years have shown that the chromosomes of many organisms, especially those of higher vertebrates, consist of a series of segments. This is what I was talking about. The point number two in my first slide, the GC content is organized in segments I mentioned earlier, and this paper mentions the same point. Consists of a series of segments having different properties. Consists, consist of a series of segments having different properties. The different segments happen to have different properties. These can be organized as, for example, G and R bands. We have therefore sought to study the distribution of genes on chromosomes using a cytological approach in conjunction with the universal makers of gene makers for genes. So here the mm, it is very clear that the, the 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 properties of genes depends on the segments, I mean the G C, A T and other rest of the segments. And and this is uh, uh, or 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 in view of G and or bands. 
so 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 we can understand we, we we have some supporting observation from this research that the gc content helps us to study the species and there is another paper that ra rather this paper is more i mean this paper rather more important than the rest of the papers and this paper uh, the, 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 the tap the concept uh, uh, to the navel uh, I mean by bringing more emphasis on the GC versus AT differences and the importance of GC content this paper was written by Jeffrey Kathleen and Kathleen uh, the title of the paper is analysis of genomic GC content code on usage initiated code and context and translation uh, termination sites in tetrahymena. Uh, this was the published in Journal of Eukaryotic Microbiology uh, in 1999, and, and and I will try to study the entire uh, passage uh, because this is uh, rather more important uh, compared to the rest of the studies. Uh, the, the paper mentions in this way that in recent years the amount of molecular sequencing data from tetrahymena thermophila has dramatically increased. We analyze GC content, codon usage, initiate a codon context and stop codon sites in the extremely AT rich genome of this ciliate. Highly expressed genes were relatively GC rich and exhibited an extremely biased pattern of codon usage while developmentally regulated genes were more AT rich and showed less codon usage bias. So I'm going to ha underline this uh, particular statement uh, which is very very important for our present uh, uh, study that uh, highly expressed genes were relatively GC rich so that is more important observation exhibited an extremely biased and that, that is a different thing developmentally regulated genes were more AT rich so these are the two important uh, uh, statements which we need to underline uh, highly expressed genes were relatively GC rich and developmentally regulated genes were more AT rich so we have a mind-blowing evidence from the study that the GC content helps us to understand the nature of the species and also helps us to uh, study the genome of any given species and also helps us to study the 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 advancement of the species in evolution evolution process so this is actually the 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 purpose of this uh, presentation uh, so in my next presentation I'm going to explain you how to do data analysis on GC content uh, uh, given some s gene sequence uh, which I explained in my previous presentation uh, I mean if, if we have a data file or a data set uh, of a gene sequence of a species then we can do wonderful analysis uh, by, 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 by finding the GC content AT content and comparing the GC content with the AT content w we have wonderful methods in our language uh, that I will try to explain in my next uh, presentation thank you